Hey everybody, JP here from BigSexyBeast.com and Scott and I are in the wilderness today and we thought we would do a video on something that we've gotten quite a few questions about which is how do you stay connected and telecommute uh, from the wilderness? And so I'm going to go over a little bit of the gear that I'm using to stay connected, what to do about connectivity, how well does it work, how well does it not work, and uh, this will be a little bit more in-depth video, a little bit longer video to try to give you a feel. I'm going to get a little bit nerdy on some of the connectivity stuff. Uh, you can skip through some of that if it's not what you're interested in. But for those of you that are really interested in connectivity and how to work remotely um, from more of this kind of setting as opposed to your dining table, uh, this video is for you and I hope you find it interesting. Um, along the way, if you have questions about anything, pop them into the questions down below. I'll do my best to answer it because I really want this to be a uh, good video for you to get your questions answered about how you might set something up to, uh, to work remotely. So let's get into it and I'll try to go through piece by piece and, and, uh, and really kind of go into a fair amount of detail. Okay, so maybe to get started here, let's talk a little bit about kind of some of the key components of uh, my mobile office setup for telecommuting from the wilderness. Uh, so, you know, the, uh, the smartphone's the center of our lives these days, and it's going to be no different out here. I'm going to take you through. There's another review about this smartphone that's going to post here in the next day or so. So I won't go into detail on the smartphone, but I'm going to tell you how I use it more in this video. Um, but the code key components are a smartphone, a really good Bluetooth headset with a long battery life and great noise cancellation. There'll be another video specifically about this and the noise cancellation. You can probably hear the river in the background right now. Uh, that is where this is really going to come in. Obviously a laptop. How to charge the laptop. The cell phone booster in the truck. And then the most recent addition to the kit is a satellite phone. So we'll get into each of these here. Uh, but to get started here, um, as you can see, we're out in the wilderness. We're out in the wilderness here. Uh, we are at the edge of a federal wilderness system, a uh, pretty remote area down on a river. Uh, one of our favorite spots to come to. It's just super peaceful, super nice, super private. Get a little bit of sun as you can see right there so we get a little bit of sun on the solar panels here um, but probably the most it, it's down in a hole uh, this campsite is and part of the problem with it being down in a hole as you can see right there i have no signal um, i'm with verizon and i have no service right now on verizon in this spot so that'd be kind of a bummer to need to start or do a conference call or anything like that with um, with no service. So let me let me talk to you first about how we deal with that to get a little bit more tech. All right, to get a little bit more technical here for those of you that are interested, I'm going to scroll down here. This is an Android device. We're going to go down here under System, and we're going to look at About Phone. We're going to look at Status. And we're gonna look at our SIM status. And we have network unknown, signal strength zero, mobile network unknown, mobile network state disconnected, out of service. So that's a bad thing for uh, needing to do a conference call right now. So let's work on fixing that. So fixing that problem with service is going to start with our signal booster and our signal booster starts with our external antenna. This is a new external antenna that I've recently added. Let me climb up on the truck here. And I've mounted it in a way, if I can do this one handed here, that I can take this antenna up or down because obviously coming into a place like this, you got a, low, a lot of low hanging branches and things like that you need to go under. and so. I can keep that antenna folded down to get back into a place that's very remote. And then when I get back into that place, I can pop the antenna up uh, to start the process of getting serviced. So let me turn the booster on, and then we're gonna work with the second component, which is gonna be the internal antenna 
for this system. So this guy is our internal antenna. I've got Velcro on the back here where I can stick it on stuff. It's got some of Scott's hair stuck on the Velcro. Uh, this stays hidden and tucked away inside the truck. Uh, but it connects to the, in to the booster. So the external antenna connects to the booster in the truck. The booster then connects to an internal antenna. I've got the internal antenna where I can unspool the cable and I can set it out here on my desk. So let's see what happens here. Oh, we're already showing that we've got one bar now. But if we take this and we set it over here on top of this, and sometimes we need to turn our airplane mode off and then back on, so to let go of the tower that it has a hold of or trying to get a hold of. Uh, let's see. I hit the wrong button there. Oh, now we, we're getting somewhere. So if you look now, we are at four bars. Again, for those that are more technical, we're now connected to Verizon. We have a signal strength of negative 105 decibels. We're on an LTE network. And we are in service with data service. And we are connected. So now obviously with four bars of 4G LTE, we can solve the first key problem, which is the ability to make a call. So what this Bluetooth headset allows me to do now is I'm now disconnected and free from the truck and the mobile phone, which is sitting on the desk over there. And so I can range about 100 feet from the truck and be on the phone. I like this headset. This is a Bluetooth Parrot. I believe it's the 450. Uh, again, there's a video, review video that's going to drop about it. Really, really long battery life. I think it's 24 hours of talk time. Really long distance connectivity so you can get away from the, uh, the vehicle and walk around. But probably the best part about this is right now you can hear the river. But when I'm on a call, you can't hear the river. First of all, it's got the boom mic, which is good. And you can fold that up, fold it down, get it out of the way. But it has really, really great noise cancellation technology. And so it's tuned to the frequency of a human voice. And so all of this here gets filtered out in the background. And you can't tell the difference between whether I'm sitting right here, whether I'm sitting in a home office, whether I'm sitting in a library. It is very, very good noise cancellation. And it makes working out here really, really um, uh, good to do. Because also having this over ear is it's also blocking out that sound for me so that I can concentrate on my work call and what I need to do. I still have one ear free here so I can hear what's around me and everything like that. Uh, but it's over my ear. I can hear really well. Um, I can pay attention to the call and focus. They can hear me very well. They don't have the distractions of any noise here. They don't have the distractions if Scout smells something and he decides to go off chasing into the wilderness for something. Um, so this is a really important component of this system and the ability to then to have a voice call and to be heard and to hear and to be able to focus and concentrate. Because it's no good to be out here and just have connectivity but not really be focused or for them to, to be heard. I mean, this, what I'm really focused on is how do I be out here and be as effective as if I'm sitting in my office, if I'm sitting in my home office. So Bluetooth headset for the long range is really important. The other thing that I really like about this phone is it has a really good mobile hotspot. So let's go ahead and turn that on. It'll take it just a second to connect. So what that's gonna do now is that's gonna not only allow me to do voice, but it's gonna create a Wi-Fi hotspot in the vicinity of camp here where I can now get connectivity. Again, if I was out away uh, from the truck, I wouldn't be able to get that connectivity, but because the phone is setting on the booster antenna and I'm creating that Wi-Fi hotspot right there, and then I'm retransmitting that signal via Wi-Fi in a radius around the truck here, I can now connect up iPad, I can connect up uh, my laptop, uh, other people's smartphones. Uh, so it creates a Wi-Fi hotspot for the entire camp. And part of the reason that you come out here is to get away from all of that stuff. 
but part of the reason that you do what this video is about is so that you can be out here more when disconnecting is not an option. All right, so now we can come over here to Wi-Fi and we can connect to BigSexyBeast.com. And so what that's doing is that's connecting my laptop up to the mobile hotspot on my phone so that now my laptop has connectivity and internet access. All right, those of you that are used to telecommuting will know what this is. So this is Zoom. Uh, so we go ahead and let's start a new meeting here. We're gonna fire up Zoom and uh, get a meeting started. Now what I typically do, oh, one thing I should mention there, as you notice, uh, I'm no longer in the wilderness. Let me get the camera out of the way there. I'm no longer in the wilderness. I'm now in a home office, if you can see that on the screen. Um, I'm in a home office. Let's change that because we're feeling a little bit more urban today. So let's change our, uh, our virtual background preferences. So while we're doing that, so oftentimes um, what I'll do is I will join the Zoom meeting over the data connection and I will dial in to the voice part of the call. That way you're using multiple channels in your smartphone uh, from a connectivity standpoint. And I find that that typically gets you a, uh, a better result. Uh, so I'm gonna actually work from, uh, from Manhattan uh, today instead of uh, working from the wilderness, if you can see that. Uh, so the Zoom virtual background actually works really well. And so now I'm sitting, I'm sitting in a quiet office uh, because of my microphone and my noise cancellation. I can hear really well because it's over ear and I'm focusing in on my call. I'm using my webcam and I'm in Manhattan. So that kind of at a high level is how I put all this together and uh, be able to stay connected, host Zoom meetings, do video conferences, um, be heard very well. Uh, and as you saw at the beginning of the video, we started this out and we had no signal at all. Then with the signal booster, we turned it on, we got it to four bars outside. I actually, in between frames of the video, moved the phone back inside the truck once I had Wi-Fi turned on. And I'm back up to five bars now inside the truck because the truck is shielding some of the interference from the outside antenna to the inside antenna. So I have four bars worth of signal now. Or, uh, so I'm sorry, five bars, full, full signal, uh, where we had none when we started. We have a Zoom conference with video going in the background with a virtual background, as you can see, uh, that has me in Manhattan and, um, uh, and can be heard very, very well. All right, the next part here is charging the laptop, you know, and staying connected and uh, having the ability to stay online. Uh, so the USB-C has been one of the greatest things for uh, this type of connectivity and working off grid. Uh, because once you have the USB-C cable plugged into your laptop on the side, you can get a cigarette lighter 12 volt plug for this side of the laptop. Now it's a slower charge. Uh, it's, a, it's a slow charge uh, that is best to do overnight in advance. And so working like this requires a little bit of planning and head, but not that much. I mean, I have an inverter so I can use a normal wall outlet. It's not the most efficient on the solar and on the batteries. And so if you just take a cable like this with a 12 volt charger, and I'm not recommending this, this is what I do. You'll have to do your own research and decide whether it's good for the battery of your laptop or not. I'm okay with it personally. Um, but what this allows me to do is to plug it into a 12 volt uh, car cigarette lighter adapter, plug the laptop up when it's turned off, charge overnight so that I'm ready to go the next day. I get a full day's worth of life out of my laptop unless I'm editing videos or something like that. Um, if I need to, I can plug this, this in. And just up inside the truck right here, I have a 12 volt power outlet so I can sit here at my desk with the laptop plugged in. Uh, the thing to note about that method of charging is your laptop will consume power faster than a 12 volt charger will put it back into your laptop. This will slow the consumption if the laptop is, is in standby or powered off overnight, it will absolutely charge your laptop. That is the most efficient way that I've found to charge the laptop. Because when you use an inverter, you're taking 12 volt, you're converting it to 120 volt, where you then have some power loss. 
from the 120 volt then you're going through a transformer on your laptop uh, charger to drop it down to I think 5 volt here um, and when you do that you have another power loss and so you're losing maybe up to 5 to 10 percent by converting it to 120 you're losing another 5 or 10 percent by converting it back down to 5 volt to charge the laptop and so by being able to just go right here into a 12 volt charger right into the side of the laptop uh, you don't have those conversion losses and so it's a much more efficient way to charge the laptop um, on your batteries when you're running off the solar for those of you that maybe haven't seen some of my other videos uh, speaking of solar if I can stand up here on top of the truck I'll show you there's 200 watts of solar right there it's getting a little bit of Sun right now so that's keeping the batteries topped off so that if I need to charge the laptop um, it's I've got plenty of reserve battery capacity to charge the laptop with so that part of the mobile office that I just went over um, I know very well and I've been using it for a long time several years minor things change maybe the headsets change I really like this headset that I've got now it's probably the most sophisticated um, that I've had thus far and it works the best for this um, but that's a pretty tried and true and proven system I feel pretty good about it I know that I can depend on it I'm beginning to experiment with a couple of other things uh, to help even expand my capabilities further and let me talk a little bit about those two so those two things that I was talking about are, you know, the, the, I get questions sometimes about the mobile cell phone booster and, you know, how well does it work, you know, and that, I gave you just a really good demonstration, I, I think, about how well it works, where we're in a setting right here, it's a place that we like to be at a lot um, in the specific wilderness, it's down in a hole, there's no connectivity here. As you saw, I had no signal to start with at all, I was able to boost it to five bars, and that makes this a very viable site for remote telecommuting. That's not always the case. And so I do get to some spots where I am unable to boost a signal enough that I can get data, which means that that's gonna be a campsite that's gonna be a voice only campsite. I can make calls and receive calls just fine in some places, um, but can't boost enough that I can get data. And that works fine for a, day, for a day where you're not hosting Zoom calls, but you need to be connected. You have a lot of conference calls, and sometimes that could be eight hours for me um, on conference calls from a spot where I have voice only. And in some spots and in some days, that works just fine. Um, in some spots, though, uh, I can get to where you can't boost, um, you can't even boost voice and you can't get service. So it's not a, a one-size-fits-all silver bullet. I would say in the majority of places, especially eastern United States, uh, northern states, um, coastal uh, areas, that works 90% of the time. Uh, and that's a number I pluck from the air. That I don't have a lot of scientific uh, data tabulated in a spreadsheet to be able to tell you, you know, for sure it's 90% of the time. But gut feel, it's about 90% of the time in the south, in the northern states, in the coastal states, that I can do what you just saw and start with, no service at all, and boost it to where I have viable vo voice and data. In Montana, Wyoming, a few spots in Colorado, a few spots in Utah, that is not the case. Um, and so I've been expanding my toolkit to consider some other options, so when I'm in a circumstance like that, how do, I, how do I continue to be able to function work uh, with no interruptions, seamless, efficient, so that I just don't have to think about it? And in a situation like that, I think satellite is the answer. So I've been experimenting with a couple of different satellite technologies, one of which longer. Um, I've got you know a bit more of a long-term review, I think almost 10 months now. Um, and the other one is very recent, like within the last month or so. So the long term is, I got the Garmin inReach. Um, I actually bought a used one from a buddy of mine, Andy, who you've seen in some of the videos probably. Uh, I bought his Garmin inReach. And I, I initially bought this as a tool so that um, when Scott and I are trail running in the wilderness by ourselves, which we do pretty often, um, if we, we can let somebody know where we're starting from, we can let somebody know that we're finished and off the trail and back to camp. 
um, and hopefully we never have to use it. But if we ever had to, we've got an SOS capability there where we could get some help if we got injured um, or or something out in the backcountry. And so I initially got this for peace of mind for that. What I didn't really think about when I got it that has turned out to be very powerful is that this has messaging capability very much like SMS and text. Now to do it through the interface of the device um, is a pain. It's sort of like one of the old school phones where you're kind of doing the T9 text and you're having to type multiple keys and it's a little bit cumbersome to be able to text from this thing um, just through this device. But what is really cool about this device, it is Bluetooth enabled. So in a bunch of my summer video series, you'll see me where I'm walking around with my Garmin Overlander tablet uh, because it's Bluetooth into this and I'm using it as my smartphone keyboard essentially. I can also with my smartphone that you saw just a second ago, I can Bluetooth to this and I can use the keyboard and an app on my smartphone just like I would use the keyboard to send an email from my smartphone or to send a text message from my smartphone and uh, and it works almost everywhere that I've tried it and I think I can say that now with a degree of confidence because uh, at this point now I have sent and received thousands literally thousands of SMS style messages utilizing this for some very very remote places the Kootenai um, in northwestern Montana near the Canadian border, Gray's River Corridor in Wyoming on top of the uh, Gunsight Pass in the Gravants, um, Flaming Gorge, really just some really remote places here in the lower 48, um, the uh, Loxa, Locha River in Idaho uh, in that corridor. And so the Iridium network which powers this for SMS and text messages. And you can do email over it as well. Email's a little funky. Uh, SMS and text is pretty normal. Email's a little funky. Um, but I can pick a phone number out of my contacts and I can begin SMSing with them um, and have uh, very easy to manage conversations back and forth with SMS when I'm completely unable to boost the signal. So I'm a pretty big fan of using the inReach in that way, and the Iridium network has been pretty darn good to be able to do that with. So this is one thing that I've been experimenting with now for about 10 months. It has allowed me to get further off grid, um, and it does seem to work really well, and um, I, I'm happy with the way that it works. So that's the first piece using satellite technology. Let me talk to you a little bit now about the second. So the, the second piece of satellite technology that um, I've only had for a few weeks now, so I can't really give you a long-term review and I can just give you some initial impressions, um, is kind of that same concept. I've gotten to a spot in the wilderness where I can't even boost a signal using the signal booster, but I really want to be at that spot in the wilderness and I really need to be on that day, highly connected, highly efficient. I'm going to have a normal work day. Um, and so I'm, I'm playing around with another piece of technology to try to figure that out. And that is a sat phone so that I can get traditional voice. So the way that a lot of these work, or at least the way this one works, is it has an antenna, if I can do this one-handed here. It has an antenna that comes up and uh, that's what gets you your satellite connectivity. So the first one of these I'm trying um, is a Global Star device. It's on the Global Star network. Um, and the reason I picked this one to start is that the minute plans are very favorable for this. So I think I'm at a $100 a month uh, plan with this, which is pretty similar to a regular cell phone. That gets me 200 minutes, and you say, hey JP, that doesn't really sound like a lot of minutes. If you're talking on the phone eight hours a day, how's that gonna work? So the, the cool thing about that is, is that I can roll over those minutes. And so I get 200 minutes this month. Let's say that I use 10 of them. It means I've got 190 minutes that are gonna roll over into next month. So next month, I start the month with 390 minutes. And let's say I only use 10 minutes that month. It means I'm gonna roll over another 190, and that month I'm gonna start off with, you do the math, close to 600 minutes uh, for that month. The reality is with this is that there aren't that many circumstances when I am that far off grid 
where I'm going to need satellite voice uh, communication and SMS uh, to be able to function and work. It's a rare number of days out of 365. I tend to plan those days on the weekends so that my connectivity does, needs are not that high anyway. But in a, in a situation where I needed to, I'm probably going into, after a few months, into a situation where I've got four or 500 minutes. Um, you know, 600 minutes, that's 10 hours worth of calls, if my math is right, um, that I could do in a day from a spot that's completely far flung and off grid. Uh, so that's the idea behind this. For another $100 a month, for $200 a month, you can actually step up to a fully unlimited plan on Global Star if you felt like you needed that, um, where it wouldn't matter where you were at or how much you talked um, to, uh, to be connected. You could just talk all the time. What I've found with this so far, and again, I'm two or three weeks into this at most, and I've only tried it once or twice so far, is that at least the Global Star device is a little bit more picky about your campsite. So as I showed you here, we're in a campsite down on the river where we are down in a pretty decent canyon and pretty decent hole. This phone does not like this campsite uh, because it is down in this hole and one of the things it needs is it needs line of sight to satellites. And so I have found down here in this particular campsite I can make calls, but from the time that I power it on to the time that it acquires a satellite, it takes a while. The other thing that I've noticed is that the same way that it takes it a while to acquire a satellite, which I think probably what's happening, is it is waiting for a satellite to come over that it's connecting to. Uh, similarly, as that one satellite you're locked onto goes out of range, you will drop a call. And so my sense is that this is probably going to be best for campsites where you're completely off grid, you're far flung so far that you can't boost with the Wi-Fi booster, cell phone service or signal, um, and you need connectivity, and you camp either up high, uh, like on top of a mountain, or you camp in a big open area like a meadow or a high plain. Uh, the Bighorns, for example, in Wyoming would have been perfect for this because you're way up high, like at 10,000 feet, but it's very much like a big mesa or rolling hills or plateau up there. So you have really good line of sight to the horizon. I think this device probably works pretty well in that circumstance. And when you do get connected, the call quality is surprisingly clear, considering that it's going all the way to outer space and then all the way back down to somebody's smartphone somewhere. I called my buddy Steve. We had a call um, as a test call, and the call is surprisingly clear. There is maybe a little bit of latency, but it was not bad. I was surprised. I expected it to be a lot worse. It really wasn't any worse than being on some of the Zoom calls that I'm on these days uh, from regular connectivity. All right, for whatever reason there, my GoPro gave me a temperature warning, so I kind of picked back up where I was. Um, surprisingly, the latency is not that bad considering how far the round trip of a call is going. Um, it's not any worse than some of the Zoom calls I'm on when I have normal connectivity in an urban setting. Um, so I, uh, maybe just a little bit of latency, but it wasn't always, it was just every now and then and maybe occasionally it was a little bit more tinny, if that makes sense, or a little bit more... So after giving you that old, that long background there, kind of my net net on this is that I'm not convinced yet that Global Star is going to be a viable voice scenario for me. I've heard that Iridium has a lot better connectivity because they have more satellites and that it's a lot easier to acquire a satellite and that the connectivity is easier to maintain. Uh, that being said, when I get connectivity with the Global Star, the calls are very good. The call quality is to the point where no one can really tell the difference. Uh, but I seem to have to work at it a little bit more. So I'm not sure how viable this is going to be. I'll have to give you a long-term update, uh, uh, update on that as I get more experience with it. So I hope that's helpful on uh, how, how I um, am able to uh, stay connected and work remotely from 
uh, wilderness style settings. Um, I've been doing it for a long time now, um, probably going on 10 years in various configurations over time. And uh, over time, I've been able to dial it in and get it to work. I'm sure you've got a lot more questions. Please pop them down below. I will try to go through them one by one. I'm happy to get into more technical details for those of you that are interested in more technical details into the Q&A uh, down below. Um, but I hope this video um, uh, gets you what you need to get the basics and get started. And uh, as I evolve this setup, which I typically always constantly do, um, I will come back later and do an update. But that setup that I went through with you for me works really well in the majority of places. There are places where it is not going to work, and that is why I am exploring satellite connectivity. Um, but for the majority of places, like I said, south, northern states, coastal states, um, that's going to work pretty well for you, I think. Um, some of the mountain states, in most places, it also works well. There are a few places in the mountain states where it is challenging to do. And then in far northern Canada, um, Labrador, Newfoundland, um, it works in some places, in some places it doesn't. Um, so if you're going up into the Arctic, you're going to have to find some different situations and, and scenarios. Um, and uh, I guess because I, I did, I had to, especially in like northern Quebec, Labrador, Newfoundland was pretty good, a pretty good connectivity in Newfoundland, best I remember, but Labrador uh, was, was really difficult to manage. Same with uh, northern Quebec. As you got closer to the U.S. border, um, it was a little easier to do. So shoot your questions to me. Happy to go through them. Hope you found this helpful.